It's the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show, brought to you by Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and SRI Supply. Here's tonight's Speed 77 Radio Race Chaser Online Crew Chief, Tom Baker. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Night Thunder here on the Performance Motorsports Network. We call it the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show, which kicks off our Thursday night of motorsports conversation here on PMM. My name is Tom Baker. I am the senior editor of RaceChaserOnline.com. Today's racing news, yesterday's racing history, tomorrow's racing stars. And we are broadcasting live tonight from the Charlotte Motor Speedway inside the Media Center's theater room where uh, poll night taking place this evening. Bojangles poll night here at the Speedway. And uh, we've had a lot of action on track already this afternoon. We've had several press conferences. We've had an unveiling of a new paint scheme, a new... Uh, branding if you will for one of the cars for 2016 we'll talk about that as we get going on the program here this evening and of course uh now uh we're getting ready to start sprint cup qualifying for saturday's bank of america 500 and that will be followed by the summer slam 150 for the nascar wheel and southern modified tour on track here this evening so a lot still to come and we've got a couple of hours of motorsports conversation we're going to keep you updated on all of the action here from charlotte as we go through the show we've got driver guests and of course i am joined at the race chaser round table Actually, it's a rectangle table here at Charlotte this <laughs> evening. Jacob Seelman, the managing editor for Race Chaser Online, is with me. Kyle Magda going to be joining us in a little while as well. Jacob, certainly an exciting day so far here at Charlotte. Lots of action and lots still to come. And uh, it's really been quite a, an amazing day so far. It has been, and I think Kyle actually just snuck in the back door. So he we'll did. Get to Kyle him Magda has joined us. Uh, yes. uh, but need like no, that that been... sound effect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we need a door creak. But anyway, getting back to the point, it's been a great day here at Charlotte. Uh, definitely enjoyable already. I for one was very excited earlier. I didn't quite get here in time for it, but the unveiling of Bush returning to uh, NASCAR for 2016 on Kevin Harvick's car, the defending champ, going to have new colors and definitely always fun to uh, bring an old sponsor back into the sport. And uh, I've already heard the words throwback thrown around for next year. Yeah. So we're a little excited about that. But uh, Casey Kane pacing NASCAR Xfinity Series final practice in the Great Clips 88 machine for Junior Motorsports. His crew chief, Keith Rodden, was in the media center earlier this afternoon and had a lot of fun with that press conference, Tom. It was very enjoyable. We had a little dance party going on in the front of the media center. I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been a busy, uh, busy day here for all of us media types. We had, of course, the, uh, the unveiling of that... Uh, new bush rebranding and bush uh, beer coming back to nascar that actually happened right in here this is the first thing that happened in this theater room this morning at about 11 30 they had a they had a um a, a car with the bush beer paint scheme on it and a car with a bush light uh livery on it both uh, on display here that they unveiled and kevin harvick was here and uh representatives from uh anheuser bush particularly the bush brand were here um and, uh, yeah, so that was fun. And then we've had, uh, well, let's see. We had Regan Smith for a press conference. We had Carl Edwards for a press conference. We had uh, Jeff Gordon for a press conference. And um, then we had, uh, they've got an honorary crew chief on the five car. And that was Braylon. the young man, Braylon Bean is his name. And that was the young man you were referring to. He um, he has a, uh, a bit of a, a charity, a cause that he's... Uh, um, got going called Just Keep Dancing, and I think it raises money for children's cancers, if it I does. remember correctly. And he did a demonstration of a little bit of dancing and something about the whip and the nay nay and uh, uh, you know modern does, music. Does I'm old, that, I don't yeah. understand. You wave, know, I'm wave, wave, 
not it, not your speed. I'm still doing Bill Haley and the Comets. So <laughs> don't date yourself. You know, oh, I'm happy to date myself. The 50s and 60s were great music. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it's been a busy day in the media center and lots to do and see. And now we've we're getting set to go racing here. A lot of stuff uh, to take place here with Sprint Cup qualifying and also the modified race coming up. Yeah, so, uh, NASCAR Wheel and Southern Modified Tour race coming up 150 laps around the quarter mile later tonight. But uh, before we get to all that, Kyle Magda, we get to uh, wrap up here in this first uh, 45 minutes or so of the show, wrap up the NASCAR K&M Pro Series East season with two notables from the season finale that occurred over the weekend. Last weekend at Dover International Speedway, um, the breakout win for Rev Racing and for Colin Cabry and, of course, William Byron, who capped off an incredible season, four wins. And while he uh, might not have had the top five finish he wanted at Dover on last Friday, he did end up with the big prize, the season championship, fifth rookie to win the title in his rookie season. And just mighty impressive the job that both of those young men did to uh, garner the accolades they did last Friday. And uh, we get to talk to both of them here coming up in this first hour of the show. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that because uh, Colin Cabry, I mean, I would have never expected that to him go out there, um, was up the third in about the first 25 laps, and then um, worked his way up to the front, got past Rico Abreu on lap 67 and, and led the rest of the way. I mean, I just did not see that coming. But, yeah, what a performance by that team. Second win of the year for Rev Racing. Um, I know I mentioned a little bit about that on Monday Night Show, but um, you know, it was good to see a guy like Colin Cabry, uh, another first-time winner, in the series, um, you know, I think he said it sent us a big statement um, to everybody else, H. Scott and uh, the bigger teams out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Colin did what everything right. He was fast off the truck. And actually, Jacob, uh, you know, William Byron started first because of qualifying it rained out. Colin Cabrel had one more lap than William Byron to get the extra bonus point uh, for most laps led. So uh, that was interesting. But but going to William to William now, um, Jacob did exactly what he had to do. He finished ninth, ninth through better. He's the champ. Uh, you know, Scott Heckert finished right behind him in tenth, and Austin Hill had the engine problem uh, running up there in the front. So uh, yeah, it was really nice to see those three up front early on in the race battling. Uh, you know, it just seemed like uh, maybe William's car was starting to just go away a little bit, but in the end, you know, he he may have not uh, won the uh, not won the race, but he won the war, won the championship. So, um, you know, big congratulations to him. I know, uh, you know, they they had a really good season, four wins this season. We'll have them on at 7:30 tonight, so there's a lot gonna happen tonight. And I mean, it was just a big week, you know, for them, for everybody in Charlotte, you know, with the race going on. And uh, Jacob, just there's a lot of great vibes going on. And we actually, what's nice is we have another. We have another NASCAR home track championship to decide tonight, so I'm, I'm glad you guys are there. We do. Yeah, we do. Uh, and Andy Sice has his work cut out for him. He had a 10-point lead coming into this race. He's got to finish, doing really quick math in my head here, sixth or better to win the championship. Uh, actually, check that. Fifth or better, I think, when you factor in all the tiebreakers. Fifth or better to win the championship. He starts 11th tonight, Tom, on a t- track that's very tough to pass this front stretch quarter mile at charlotte not easy to navigate uh, you talk about guys like george brunhosel ryan priest the front row for tonight brunhosel's on the pole he needs to make up a lot of ground to win the championship going out leading the most laps potentially winning and trapping the championship leader well back in the pack he's off to a good start yeah you know it gb3 is really in control of his own destiny here because he's starting up front and this is a track this is definitely a very tight track like you said the front stretch is very tight it's really hard to pass here on the outside there's almost very well no way or limited way to pass on the top you really got to be a lot faster than somebody to do that so really the two ways you pass here for the most part are you either get as many spots as you can on a restart uh or you have to move the guy in front of you up and you know and 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 pass him that way so unless somebody makes a mistake in front of you that's the only two ways you're going to pass here so i like gb3's chances but you know he's he has got a tough road to hoe for sure jacob going into this um you know he's he's the one with the biggest hole to dig out of for the points but he is in the best starting spot and that's really what it takes to at least get the run kicked off. We're going to do a little bit of business, and 
When we come back, we're going to continue talking K&N East and talk with the Dover winner from last Friday. Colin Cabry joins us on the hotline when we come back. You're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the Internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of Internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion okay okay we're buckling up see all buckled good choice i'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time what what no do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives never give up until they buckle up a message from the national highway traffic safety administration and the ad council visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up for more information if you're a gearhead and you just can't get enough of your favorite motorsports on that channel on the cable, or you look at that guy network and you just go, what does that have to do with me? We have the answer. Performance Motorsports Network. Right here on the internet. The best cruising tunes, the best in motorsports programming, and the best shows. We have opinionated hosts, and we like it that way. If you want to get involved, if you want to bench race, be listening for information coming up soon right here on this channel, the Performance Motorsports Network, your source for motorsports. Here we go with more of the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on PMN. Thursday Night Thunder, as we call it, and we're broadcasting live from the Media Center at Charlotte Motor Speedway. If you're wondering where the Media Center is on Speedway grounds, we're in the infield Media Center inside their theater room. This has been a busy room today. We'll talk more about that as we continue on with the program. Tom Baker with you, along with Kyle Magda and Jacob Seelman. And Jacob, it's time for our first driver guest of the evening, going to the Race Chaser phone lines here. We've got Colin Cabry joining us. Let's get Colin out here. Let him go full throttle. Colin, welcome to the show, and congratulations on a huge win in the K&N Pro Series East finale at uh, Dover. That was really fantastic. I could be happier for you, my friend. Oh, thank you very much, guys. I, uh, I greatly appreciate it, and thank you for having me on the show. Well, Colin, uh, we definitely appreciate you making some time for us. I mean, let's, let's go back and, and replay this for a couple of minutes because it was a drive I think that you were hoping you would see before the end of this year, but I think a lot of people that may have watched you for all season maybe weren't sure was going to happen. You drove around Rico A. Brew, another sprint car product like yourself, uh, just about halfway through the race and basically left the field in your dust from there, uh, led the final uh, 60 or so laps on route to victory lane. I mean, it was an impressive drive, one that I know you've been hoping for. Somebody called it a breakout when they were talking about it to me earlier this week, and I agree with them. I mean, was this finally the piece to the puzzle, the run that made you feel like, okay, hey, we finally got the speed we need to go up and run with the big boys here? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was, um, like you said, it was a breakthrough win for us. And, uh, you're exactly right. We, we were hoping to get a run like that, you know, at one of these, you know, last races of the year, you know, the first of the year started off really slow and, uh, you know, we just been working our way up 
and uh, at the end of the season to have a run like that can only lead you know us in the next season hoping for the best and you know nothing less as of course well before we talk about uh, next season I mean let's talk about this season because I know a lot of it didn't go the way you wanted it to but you ended the season on a really high note two of your three best finishes all year long came in the final three races of this season you had a top five run on the road course at VIR a place that you said coming in, you weren't sure what was going to happen because you had barely even seen a pavement road course to do any racing on it. And then to go to arguably the toughest oval track on the schedule in Dover and get a win. I mean, you you talk about peaking at the right time, and I feel like that's exactly what you guys did. But you did it at some of, for you, I think, the toughest tracks on the schedule. And I think that's what makes the run maybe a little bit surprising to us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I tend to, to do better, um, you know, obviously, uh, from the, the dirt track experience. And, um, you know, when you race sprint cars, you go to a lot of new places a lot of the time. And uh, the first laps you have on the track, you know, are, uh, you, you don't know, you know, what to expect. And I think that's when, you know, I excel the best is when I'm not quite 100% sure what's going on or what to expect. And I kind of just wing it. So, so to speak. So <laughs> it's been, uh, usually that's when we do our best is, you know, these, these slower tracks, you know, you tend to overthink it. You tend to, you know, overdrive it or underdrive it. But when you go to these big places and the road courses, you don't know what to expect. And the races are so crazy and the speeds are so fast. You just, like I said, and just, you just kind of go out there and do what, you know, what comes natural to you. And that's what we ended up doing there towards the end. And also we got some good setups under the car there towards the end. And um, I think we were supposed to have another top 10 run at uh, Pennsylvania, ended up having an oil leak. So uh, coming into, you know, the end of the year, we've, we've had some good fast race cars and uh, mostly been able to get the job done. I'm sure there was no pun intended by your use of the phrase wing it spoken like a true sprint oh. car racer. <laughs> yeah no it was uh it was totally meant to you know <laughs> just not really know what's going on and just kind of just go to you know your, your natural instincts and what feels uh what feels natural to you and that's i when i like i said when i end up excelling the most by the way colin i'd be remiss if i didn't mention this before i start to look ahead towards what you want to do for next year but uh, a little birdie told me it's also your birthday today so we're glad you're spending a little piece of that with us here on pmn because i know uh, you've probably had a lot of fun you you probably still haven't come down off the high from the win and now you get another one and put another year on the calendar here no oh, yeah absolutely uh it's been it's been a fun day um i had some media stuff to do earlier but it's been a fun day and uh everything has uh has gone well and uh you know just just another day just another birthday well we, we we're not going to sing to you colin because we like you too much <laughs> and i can't carry a tune in a bread basket so uh we'll pass on the singing but happy birthday to you uh I'm curious when you when you get to Dover and you're in a situation like that. I mean, I know you say that you feel like you're at your best when you're when you're flying by the seat of your pants or winging it as you as you say. But um, there had to be a little bit of apprehension, especially on the start. I mean, you were you know back in the field a little bit. Uh, talk oh, about yeah. the beginning of the race and what you were thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anytime at a place like Dover, you know, it's the biggest, fastest racetrack we go to all year uh, for the Kane and Pro Series. So to uh, to be able to go to a place like that and not get any practice, no qualifying, you know, no laps around the track. And uh, I think we had 15 rookies out there and uh, rolling off into turn one on lap one. And it was I think we were doing about 30 mile an hour slower than we should have been. Actually, I think everybody wow. did a really great job, a really great job at taking it easy. And, uh, you know, it took everybody a couple of laps to, you know, really figure out how fast you can go around that place because Dover's really fast. So yeah, there was a bit of nerves and there was a little bit of uncertainty, you know, going into, you know, the race. 
now looking ahead, I know there's a little bit less uncertainty going into next year now that you've been able to really showcase what you can do, Colin. I'm curious what your outlook is now going into 2016. I know right now you're expecting to be uh, back with the same group for next year, kind of do a lot of the same of what you did this year, but what's the outlook going into the 2016 season, you know, knowing now what you've accomplished in the latter part of this year? Uh, the, basically, like you said, you know, going to hopefully be back with the same team, uh, same race cars. Um, but, yeah, uh, our ex- expectations now have uh, risen, and uh, they're a lot higher than, you know, la- than coming into this year, of course, because this is going to be my full my first full year in a stock car. So, obviously, you know, the, the chances, you know, of us winning now are a lot higher, and uh, we expect to do that now, now that we know we can do it, and especially the way we did it. Um, you know, just put a, a, a crown on top of all of it, you know, just being able to come right out of the trailer. And uh, we made no adjustments throughout the whole race uh, when we came in for those breaks and the car was just perfect all race. I couldn't, com- you know, I, I had no complaints at all. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get more cars like that next year or, you know, at least close to that so we can have some, you know, consistent top five finishes. That's amazing to hear, too, considering you guys had absolutely no practice that the car was that good. Yeah, I was surprised myself. You know, we came in after the first, you know, half, uh, was I think it was about 25, we came in or something like that for the first competition caution. And uh, they pulled the tires off and put new ones on. And he said, uh, the, the, you know, the right front looked extremely good, which is, you know, one thing that we were concerned about. Um, so, and they said, what do you want to change? And I said, guys, right now we're moving forward. I think we're up to seventh by that point, maybe. Um, we're moving forward. So, you know, don't touch it. And if anything, you know, we'll change it at the halfway break and coming to the halfway break, we took the lead and started to gap, you know, the 98 a little bit. So, uh, then they asked me again, you know, do you want anything changed? I said, Nope, just throw tires on it. And, uh, you know, we'll just go out for the second half and, you know, do what we do best. Colin coming into the season, a uh, full season, as you said, in a stock car. I mean, what were your expectations heading into this season? Now, now that you have the win at Dover under your belt, uh, you know, obviously coming into this season, uh, it wasn't, you know, we were just trying to get finishes and, you know, bring the car home in one piece, which at New Smyrna, we, we finished the race. It wasn't quite in one piece, uh, but we ended up, you know, we completed all the laps and um, it started out slow. You know, the, the first part of the year started out real slow and uh, me trying to learn the car, trying to know what we needed to know to, to go fast. And uh, that was the big thing is, you know, the car had to feel good, but also I had to know what the car had needed to go fast during the race and in the long run. So that was our big, you know, that was our big thing is just trying to know what the, what I needed to, to feel comfortable and to go fast. And just speaking about that, um, you know, you have a, the season done now. I mean, who, who was the biggest help to you um, to get that where you were at Dover last week? Uh, it had to be, you know, everybody that was on the radio with me and uh, my, my spotter, Anthony, you know, he, he did a great job. Um, obviously, you know, my guys, my crew for setting the car up, you know, the way they did coming off the, uh, out of the shop, you know, and that, that's impressive, you know, for a crew chief to say, you know, uh, yeah, we didn't make any adjustments and it just proves that, you know, you know, he has some confidence now and, uh, Anthony for keeping me, like I said, on the radio, keeping me, uh, keeping me calm throughout, you know, the past couple laps there you know, trying not to get over my head. Well, you certainly didn't get it, get in over your head. Instead, you uh, really showed that you've been able to keep your head above water, I think, this season in the KNNE series. And I think my final question for you is, you know, coming from where you came from and on the sprint car side, I, I got to watch you a bunch on the dirt before you made this jump to the KNN series this year. And I'm curious, did this season live up to your expectations? Is there anything you would have hoped happened differently or, you know, were you guys happy with how it all turned out in the end here? Um, you know, towards the end there, I think we were pretty happy. Um, obviously I wish this would have, the, the stock car would have, you know, been able to come to me a little easier than it did. And we were able to, you know, get our feet, you know, on the ground a little earlier. So I think, you know, hopefully we would have had a better points run. Um, you know, 10th isn't terrible, but it's obviously, you know, about halfway. Um, so we pretty much wanted to uh, basically start out just a little better. And I think that's what we're going to do next year is just start out better. 
I know you said to me once earlier this season that was a, a big part of the key. And I know uh, another key to that puzzle, Colin, was all the people that have helped you this year, the sponsors, supporters. And, you know, we always want to give you a chance to shout out to them, uh, especially in the wake of such a big moment for you in your career. Who makes it happen for you in this Rev Racing crew? Uh, obviously, Rev Racing themselves, uh, the NASCAR D for D program, you know, everybody, you know, behind the scenes. Um, that really make it a, a special, you know, a special, a, a special deal. Uh, Rev Racing, NASCAR D for D, uh, UTI, NTI. Without their support this year, you know, we wouldn't have been, um, you know, been able to run, you know, as, probably as well as we did because you know we had their help and, uh, uh, you know, everybody back at the shop. Like I said, my family and uh, my girlfriend Ashley. Everybody that you know stands behind me. Well, it's definitely been fun, Colin, to uh, to have you on the program with us and uh, definitely looking forward to seeing what kind of a start you can make to 2016. But, uh, you know, we also want to say enjoy the off season because now that it's here, you at least get a chance to breathe, kind of regroup for next year. And I know uh, you got to be a little excited about that. So uh, definitely uh, safety to you as you... Uh, go on into this off season. And I know you're already probably thinking about what you can do to make 2016 better. So congratulations again from all of us. And, uh, you know, we'll look forward to seeing you on track next February. All right, guys. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I appreciate it greatly. Thanks, Colin. We appreciate it. And congratulations again on a great run. Thank you so all much. Right, we, kids, I appreciate uh, it. With that, we will take a pause here and regroup, get ready to bring in not the winner, but the champion of the K&M Pro Series East for 2015. William Byron going to join us on the hotline coming up in just a couple of minutes to talk four wins, a ninth-place finish at Dover, and the championship that came together in his rookie season. That's next after these words. You're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. In 50 feet, turn left. Why are you driving so slowly? After a few drinks, I'm taking it slow. Well, you're not fooling the cop behind you. What? Get ready to pay in point one miles. <sighs> Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. This is Paul Stanley from Kiss for Rad, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Some of us work months producing a CD, but in less time than it takes to play it, someone will be killed in an alcohol-related crash. So please don't drive when you've been drinking. Plan ahead. Arrange a designated driver. Remember, friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsports. Performance Motorsports Network. This is Joey Logano, driver of NASCAR number 22 discount tire car. You know something? You and I aren't all that different. I drive a car, you drive a car. My car has tires, your car has tires. I may be going just a little faster than you each weekend, but we both need to keep those tires properly inflated to stay safe. So be tire smart and do your part. Check your tire pressures once a month and before every long journey. Visit BeTireSmart.org. 
A message from the Rubber Manufacturers Association. Now back to Speed 77 Radio, Stock Car Steel, SRI Motorsports Show, and more Thursday night race talk. Here's your host, Tom Baker. Welcome back to Thursday Night Thunder here on PMM. We are the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. My name is Tom Baker. I have Jacob Seelman with me live here at Charlotte Motor Speedway inside the Media Center Studio Room where right now Sprint Cup Series pole night qualifying is going on. Kyle Magda also joining us via Skype from PA. Uh, but Jacob, you got an update on qualifying and it looks like Freaky Fast is, well, Freaky fast. Yeah, Kevin Harvick is on top, 192.685 miles an hour right now, but that's only round one, obviously the third and final round, the one that matters. Right now, we want to talk to a driver who uh, definitely had a run that matters, and welcome him back to the show. Uh, We've had you on a bunch, William Byron, but this one might be the most meaningful, I think. You, sir, uh, just wrapped up the K&M Pro Series East Championship last Friday at Dover, A far cry from you and I talking in the pit area at the summer shootout uh, just two years ago now. Uh, Has it even begun to sink in yet what you guys accomplished in your rookie season in the K&N East Series? I mean, four wins. You did exactly what you needed to do, finishing ninth at Dover to win the title. It's just been an unbelievable run, really. Yeah, I think it's sunk in the last couple of days just thinking about it and how hard we worked and everything. But we're looking forward to next year and seeing what we can do there and the um you know as we move up through the ladder of the different series so we'll see what happens but yeah it's definitely um we're definitely proud of all our hard work this year to get four wins um in 14 races like we did so a lot of cool wins whether it's new hampshire or or uh langley or the different places we were able to get wins um especially with all the competition in the series I mean, it was fun to watch, and for you, these were a lot of tracks that you had never seen before. I think that's what uh, really made the run as impressive as it was. You know, take me take me back a little bit, um, you know, thinking through everything that's happened. At what point in the season did you start to feel like, okay, being able to make a run at this championship isn't just a reality here, but we might actually be in the driver's seat? I mean, when did you feel like it was starting to to fall your way here as far as the breaks and the points are concerned? Um, honestly, we started talking about it after the Greenville win. I think that was pretty pretty early in the season, but I don't think uh, I don't think it was the wrong approach because I think it worked for us um, to start kind of thinking about the points and how we could maximize our points. And the best way to maximize our points was to go get wins and lead the most laps. So um, when we started doing that, that kind of led to more fun races and, and all, you know, obviously better results. So, we kind of were able to capitalize on the two of those things and uh, worked out for us. I think Bristol was a turning point to go to a bigger track and, and uh, still get a top two finish was, uh, was good for our team as well. William, going into the final race at Dover, I'm curious what your mindset was because obviously uh, it's a lot of pressure to go in knowing that you – You've yeah. got a championship on the line, and you know it's your first year in the series, and uh, a very big stage. And I think by now most people know about your quick ascent up the racing ladder from, you know, just a, a, a couple, two, three years ago being an an i racer, and and then having such a great legend season, then a late model learning season, and now into K and N. Um, I'm curious what your mindset was, and I'm also. As kind of a part two of that question, I'm curious what really what it was when you realized we're not going to get a lap of practice. I just got to go do this. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, you know, going out there with no practice. And uh, really the mindset this year was the same as it was going into late models. I think a lot of people, when they looked at me going into late models after racing one year of legend cars, they said, man, it's going to be a big step. But um, we were able to go there and get a second place finish in my first late model start, and that kind of that kind of uh, created the confidence for this year to go out in the Canyon Pro Series um, in the first couple of races and get a win. Um, I don't think it's ever the pressure's ever really gotten to me so far, and I think that that's one of the keys to our success is just just enjoying the moment and just knowing that you know I'd rather be in the driver's seat than uh, than be where I was I guess three years ago when I wasn't racing. So. Um, I always look at it as a privilege. Um, and then going to Dover with no practice, I think that kind of lined up with all of the things 
I had done in the past with just no experience in general. So going to Dover, no practice, leading the first you know first thirty or so laps um, was a big accomplishment for for myself, and I think it was kind of one of those next things to check off the box and say that I could do. Well, it certainly was impressive, and you know it is a that was a very big stage for someone of your experience base to have to uh, to play on, so to speak, or perform on, uh, especially with the lack of practice. But you handled it beautifully. Now, uh, you've talked about next year a little bit, and you know I know that there's been some talk about potentially. Uh, camping world truck series uh what can you tell us right now i know you haven't got anything definite lined up yet or at least you probably can't tell us if you do but what can you tell us about your intentions is it in fact to to move up to the camping world truck series for next year william yeah i think i think that's kind of our goal is to uh to try and race in the truck series um at some capacity so I think that's really the right step. Uh, I see kind of the the guys that have come before me and the steps that they've taken to get to um, successful paths like Joey Logano and Kyle Larson. Those are kind of two guys that I'm looking at to see where they went from the Canyon Series to move up um, ultimately to the Cup Series. So I think the Truck Series is, would be a perfect option um, to learn what I need to learn um, for for advancing to the Xfinity Series past that. So. Um, that's what we're working on, and hopefully we'll we'll uh, be able to kind of put that together pretty soon and and make an announcement in the next few months. All right, William. So now I'm curious with wrapping the championship up like you did last Friday and being able to sit and reflect on all this. If if you go back now and you know take everything into account, the championship, the you know all the things that you guys fought along the way to get oh, to yeah. where you did. Um, if you grade your season, not solely based on the championship, but everything that you guys did, you know, even behind the scenes, maybe some of the stuff that we didn't get to see, the interaction between you and the team. I mean, wh- where do you grade or where do you put that bar for how you guys were able to perform this season? Yeah, I think we were like, I think we performed at an A level all year uh, with the way that our team communicated. I think everyone was comfortable right off the, right off the bat. I think we put in the effort in the off season to uh, to get the communication right. We we had meetings, we had you know dinners, lunches, whatever to get to know each other, so that when that first race came, we were comfortable. So if you just show up to the track in the first race and just expect it to work, it not off you know it doesn't work very often. So I think you see that all the way from the Cup Series down to the Canyon Series. You look at a guy like Harvick and and Rodney Childers and how well they work together. That's the same thing I feel like that Kevin Bellacourt and I had this year um, in terms of just knowing what each other needed to go faster. So um, that's a big part of it. So we did that really well this year. William, I talked to you Saturday about um, your entire season. One question I have for you is um, you had so many high points this year. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced um, trying to know to learn these cars and also going to these new tracks for you as well? Yeah, I just think that going to the new tracks, the mile long tracks and places where, you know, Dover, we're going 160 miles per hour. So just the speed differential between what I'm used to. Also, I was thinking about it today, just the, the difference in the weight of the car compared to a super late model, like the, the super late model drives completely different. Um, so that first race um, with the k and car, you just had to be patient and there's a lot more competition. So, you know, when that first race came, um, it was kind of a wake up call to say, okay, this is what I need to work on for the next race. And Thank goodness, you know, in that month span that we had off from the first to the second race, I was able to capitalize and win the second one. And that kind of uh, catapulted our season to to be what it was. I want to throw you a little bit of a ringer here for a second. And, you know, I I know that you're good at thinking about things like this. And, you know, you've been able to tackle just about anything anybody's thrown at you this year. I want to give you this to to chew on for a second because I'm curious what your answer is going to be. I know your goal is to be in the truck series in some capacity for 2016, but say that doesn't necessarily amount to a full-time opportunity. Do you consider maybe running another full season in the K and N series, defending that championship, or is it about now trying to move up and 
take those uh, national level opportunities where you can? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I think it's uh, I think the the design of the Canon series is really good uh, for for young kids, sixteen to eighteen year olds, um, even twenty year old. You know, whatever experience level you are. Um, but I feel like for me to progress, like I need to, I think I need to move up into a radial tire and run. Um, whether it's the ARCA series on the mile and a half tracks or the, or, um, you know, part time or full time in the truck series. I feel like that's the biggest thing that the Canyon series is lacking, but there's no question the competition in the series is, is very competitive. And, um, if I did have the chance to run a few races next year on the mile long track, like New Hampshire, Dover, um, and Bristol, um, half mile track, then those, those would be great races for me. So I'm not counting it out for sure. Um, but I think I definitely need to get some more experience on the radio. Well, uh, I know you're not counting anything out for 2016, and you're trying to get all that shored up. I know that takes a lot of people and supporters behind you. I know the championship run took a lot of people and supporters to be able to put together. Uh, Here's your big chance to say thank you to all the people who helped make this title run possible for you, William. Uh, Sponsors, shout-outs, who makes it happen? Um, I just say Liberty University makes it happen. Um, they they've been on board for three years and um, they're going to be on board again next year um, in a big way. So we're looking forward to promoting them, whether it's in the truck series or ARCA or wherever I'm racing uh, late model, it doesn't matter. Um, we, we enjoy carrying the colors everywhere we go. Um, so, and definitely my parents um, and my team this year, H Scott Motorsports with Justin Marks, they put together five great race teams. And especially with us winning the championship, I, can't thank them enough for all they've done well we always appreciate having you on the show Uh, you've been a friend of this show for a couple of years and it's definitely been uh, a privilege to watch your ascent through the ranks and now to be able to watch this championship run and definitely looking forward to uh, being able to watch in a in a couple months here at the champions night celebration in december when you get to celebrate at the hall of fame we'll be there to help cover that and uh, help give you the trophy too. I know you're looking forward to being able to have that presentation done and be able to celebrate with the crew one more time. So as always, uh, thanks for coming on my friend and uh, best of luck into this off season. Now you get a chance to breathe just a little bit. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. That's William Byron. And uh, again, congratulations to him and the entire eight Scott motorsports crew on their 2015 NASCAR K&M pro series East championship We're going to step aside for a moment. When we come back, we'll continue to update you. Round two of Coors Light Pole qualifying here at Charlotte Motor Speedway underway. And we'll have the numbers and the nitty gritty right after this. From Charlotte Motor Speedway, you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute, in-your-car, instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! (gasps) It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. 
Motorsports Sales Professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. And now, back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show with Speed 77 Radio's most follically challenged host, Tom Baker. (laughs) <laughs> and thanks to the lovely ladies at Sport Clips yesterday, I'm even more follically challenged than I was last week. Welcome back to the program. Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsport Show broadcasting live tonight from the Charlotte Motor Speedway inside the Media Center's theater room, where uh, we are really humbled, actually, by the opportunity to be a part of uh, Bojangles Poll Night here at uh, the Speedway, Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, and Kyle Magda with you this evening and continuing to to talk racing here. And the speeds are picking up. They are picking up. Matt Kenseth to the top, just went to the top of the board, Tom, 193 and a half miles an hour. We just lopped about three tenths off the fastest speed we ran in round one. Track's cooling off, getting quick. It is getting quick. And, and what impresses me is I've been watching uh, so far through the qualifying here and Dale Jr. sitting in third right now. He's been right up there. It's uh, as of this moment, it's Kenseth Logano Jr. Harvick and Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush in the top five. So uh, definitely, I think uh, that'll fluctuate a little bit probably before we're done. But I'll tell you what I'm most impressed about is the guy sitting seventh right now. Yeah, he I would saw transfer that. to the final round if things stayed like this. Greg Biffle's number sixteen Ford. I mean, who who would have thought that? those guys i mean they're in the mix now they were up front at Loudon a couple weeks ago had a lot of speed even despite the late race fuel gambles that were plaguing a lot of people they finished fourth in that race and now here they are at charlotte showing top 10 speed maybe just maybe roush fenway racing's finally starting to turn a corner well and let's not forget that this is this has traditionally been a pretty good track for the Biff, and he was actually third fastest in the first round of practice earlier today so oh, well you know it um, it certainly is uh starting out to be a, a speedy weekend for biffle let's hope that uh he can transfer all this speed into his racing and i think uh you, you know he was strong here in the spring and you know greg's a guy i think that's uh in a position here where you know he's got nothing to lose at this point he's going to go out and hang it on the edge and it's all about wins and upfront finishes for him and um i think it's neat to see him so far up front uh there up in the top seven or eight on the board it really is and Kyle Magda I'm I'm curious I want to go to you on this for a minute because you know we've seen Kevin Harvick be as good as he's been the last couple of weeks he's been right up there in the mix you know since the beginning of this chase circumstances took him out of the first two races he probably could have won both of those one at Dover when he needed to he's the defending winner at Charlotte now he's been fastest in the first round of qualifying. He led practice earlier today. You don't think the four teams trying to prove a point still, do you? I think they're definitely trying to prove a point. <laughs> I think the four team is really trying to uh I think the four team is really trying to be as close to the front as they can be. I mean, let's face facts here. It was just uh it was just a little bit ago that um that that Kevin Harvick was on the verge of being out of this chase. And then he had the dominating win over last weekend, Kyle. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, this is really an interesting weekend for Harvick because the question is, can he back up his performance from last weekend or are we going to see him have a good points day or, you know, what's going to happen with this, uh, Kyle? Tom, don't you think you'd be a kind of a championship caliber performance there last week? Well, yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, and again, it's, he's the defending champion. So those are the kind of performances that you expect out of Kevin Harvick in clutch situations. But, you know, 
this is a this is going to be a very uh, different sort of situation this weekend because again, this is a track where you know you've got a lot of different guys. The Toyotas run very strong here, uh, and you got some guys up front. Logano's up there right now. Biffle's up there, so you know it's not an automatic for Harvick by any means. Yeah, he's been so strong lately. I mean, the way that team's been performing in this chase, like you guys were saying, he could have gone out there and won all three races um, in the chase. I mean, he's been doing a really great job. And last weekend was the same thing. I Like I said, I told you, Tom, I really thought that was a championship caliber performance last week. I know there was some controversy earlier in the week uh, with um, with him wrecking the car during, it, during his post-race burnouts. I don't believe in that because... Uh, you know that that team. I mean, I, even if whatever happened, that team was going to win that race regardless. That Kevin Harvick put on an absolute dominating performance, and no one was going to catch him. Even even when he took the two tires or late, Tom. I mean, even Kyle Busch couldn't get to him. When I asked Kyle that in the post race, uh, you know, even it didn't matter if he had eight tires. I think he wouldn't wouldn't have passed them. But uh, no. yeah, Kevin is just doing what he's been doing, and. No, I I expect the same this week, and I, I really think um, you know he's he was fastest in the first round of qualifying. Now he's I think he's in the top five. Um, he's not leading, but uh, yeah, I mean that that team is is gelling right now. They have the brakes fall their way, which they did last week at Dover. I mean they're they're in prime position right now because they don't win last week. I mean there there's a chance, guys, that we we could have had a a second round of the chase without Kevin Harvick or Jimmy Johnson, but uh, Kevin was not going to be denied. I mean the way well, that car handled. Last week, Tom, uh, 15th, the first, and 24 laps. I mean, after that, I mean, nobody was catching him. I'm not, like I said, I, they tried and they tried, and no one could really just get around Kevin after that. Well, think about this, uh, Kyle. Last week, both Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick going into that race were outside the top 12. Kyle, just by a few points, but um, they were both outside the top 12, so you know, it could very well have wound up that we had no Jimmy Johnson, no Kyle Busch, and no Kevin Harvick. Uh, you know, and and yet here comes Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch, and both of them did exactly what they needed to do. They they brought their A game to the track last week, and they ran up front all day long. And yet Kyle, as you said, could still not catch Kevin. Um, they were the two best cars at the track, even though. Kevin was clearly faster than Kyle, but you know, it, again, it goes to show you the format. I'll tell you another driver who's been fast here today who very well could be a dark horse in this is Eric Elmarola. He was up near the top of the charts. Um, in the first round of practice, uh, he was 11th, and for a while in second round, he was, I think, second or third on the charts. So both he and Ryan Blaney actually have been fast all day long here today. And one other development that we've learned uh, from the pit area, is, from the garage area, is that Todd Barrier is working with the 47 team uh, here this weekend, and that seems to be helping A.J. Allmendinger a little bit. He was 10th in first-round practice, so he's been fairly quick as well. Um, Todd is just, uh, he's not officially a member of the team just providing some i think some consultation and uh we'll see where that goes but um certainly uh some some drivers here uh quick today that you may not expect necessarily to be so close to the top of the charts and tom keep in mind i mean something that got overlooked last week was eric almarola's fifth place finish at dover i mean he did pit late Took tires on, on, on actually the final caution. Drove all the way up to fifth and actually was looking for fourth from Jamie McMurray until time yeah. ran, ran out. So, I mean, th- you know, everyone, we were all focused on the chase last week, but Eric Almirola was the highest finishing on chaser last week. And that team has had some good runs. Fourth at Richmond. Uh, I know they just missed the chase this year. You know, they won at Daytona last year in July on, on the 30th anniversary of the Kings 200th win. But, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're a really good dark horse pick. And I think last year with the chase, I don't think that 43 team was a fluke for just making it in because, you know, we, we talk about it this year, they're missing it. But last year, you know, Chicago, they ran so strong, Tom, and they had the engine let go. I think he's running sixth at the time. So it just yeah. circumstances hasn't, haven't gone their way well, all season long. And, and, and Tom, I know you mentioned also Ryan Blaney. I mean, he makes the race, you know, thankfully it doesn't rain so he can make the race. So, um, you know, 16th. it's just, you know, yeah, 16th Jacob. And, uh, you know, I mean, um, you know, him and Michael McDowell, both, um, you know, the rain, yeah. they're not running at Charlotte. So they both can, uh, can race on Sunday and, uh, or excuse me, Saturday night and, uh, just, um, be able to do that, Tom. 
Yeah, we're in uh, good shape tonight for the weather. Uh, not so sure about uh, tomorrow night into Saturday, but we'll have to see. But uh, certainly in good shape tonight. And, and Al Marola mentioned earlier that, um, you know, he said, you know, we've had good cars all year. We just haven't had the speed. And uh, over the last, uh, you know, several races, they've been able to find the, the more speed in the car. So that's really helped him a lot. And it's great to see the 43 back up running among the uh, top five, top 10. Yeah, it is, Tom. And it's good to see his teammate, even Sam Hornish, have a little bit of speed. This on the heels of the fact that uh, RPM, Richard Petty Motorsports, announced that uh, they will be sticking with Ford for 2016 and beyond. Hornish does not advance to the final round, but he slots in 18th on the grid. That's not bad at no, all. That's one of his best qualifying yeah. efforts all season long. And Almarola does make it to the final round after he goes ninth in round two. So you got a pair of Fords up there in the mix uh, that are among the non-chasers in Greg Biffle and Eric Almarola, seventh and ninth respectively the blue ovals have got to be uh, smiling so far when you got joey logano up there brad keselowski just missing the cut now you've got biffle and almarola performing well i i imagine if you're a ford either a driver or you know some of the manufacturer representatives that i've seen here today uh, tom they've got to be smiling at this well yeah and, and it's the thing about it is it's it's a mix. I mean, you've got Biffle from Roush Fenway running well. You've got, you know, the 43 and the 9 both running well. You've got the 21, the Wood Brothers car running and the well. Penske and then, cars. of course, the Penske cars. So you've got at least some sort of uh, upfront representation from each of the, the, the top Ford teams, uh, which is really good to see. And, you know, I know Ford's worked, been working very hard with Roush Fenway uh, to, uh, you know, to help them get back uh, where to where they've been. And, of course, Penske's been strong all the while. And um, naturally, uh, the 21 car, uh, which is more closely aligned this year with Penske, Ryan Blaney's been fast just about everywhere he's gone. And certainly, uh, I mean, he was in the top three or four throughout, um, you know, a lot of the first couple yeah. of practices today. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, we'll take that to the second half of our show, which is coming up around the turn. Also coming up, we've got Harrison Rhodes from the NASCAR Xfinity Series, who is going to join us in just a few minutes to talk his ride for the weekend here at Charlotte and his expectations, aspirations heading into the rest of 2015 and down the road into next season as well. So stand by. The Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show continues right after this here on the Performance Motorsports Network. I'm NASCAR driver Bobby Lebon. At 200 miles per hour, many unseen dangers can arise in the blink of an eye. That's why we have spotters high above the track. They help drivers avoid trouble. Parents need to play the same role when it comes to kids and computers. As a parent, I know the internet can take kids to wonderful sites for learning, entertainment, and fun, but it can also lead to danger. Here are some safety tips. Keep the computer in a family area where you can see it. Proactively teach your children never to share personal information online. My turn. Become knowledgeable about signing on to websites, searching for information, and using email and instant messaging. Doing so will help you recognize potential dangers. Familiarize yourself with safer websites and post that list by your computer. Like our spotters, parents are best positioned to see the dangers kids could face online and to help them avoid them. Make a commitment to keeping kids safe online. A message from WebWiseKids and Ask.com. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute, in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun. 
Go fast and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Travel is part of the American way of life. When we're on vacation, we keep an eye out for anything that looks out of place. <laughs> Miss your bag. When we travel from city to city, we pay attention to our surroundings. Everyone plays a role in keeping our community safe. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, be aware of your surroundings. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne. For many years, you know I've had a drink problem and I'm, I'm trying to battle that problem every single day. But one thing I don't do, I don't drive my car when I'm drinking. I get someone to drive me. Do not drink and drive. It's the stupidest thing. If you drink, just don't drive. Not only are you going to hurt yourself, you may hurt some other person and you wouldn't want that on your conscience, would you? A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Now, back to more with Tom and the Speed 77 radio crew. It's the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Tom Baker and Jacob Seelman broadcasting live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway here on Bojangles Pole Night. We're inside the Infield Media Center, inside the theater room, and uh, broadcasting live from speed, the Speedway. Kyle Magna joining us via Skype from PA, and of course, uh, Big Mike behind the glass doing such an awesome job of pushing all the right buttons here. And uh, we've got Harrison Rhodes with us right now harrison is a competitor in the nascar xfinity series he's been on the show before and he is competing albeit in a bit of a different situation here at charlotte motor speedway this weekend so let's get him out of the pits and let him go full throttle with us and harrison welcome back to the program it's good to have you back on um and let's uh kind of update Everybody on your situation, you have been racing all season for JD Motorsports in the zero car, but this weekend you are in the 13 car. Talk about, if you would, the background of exactly how and why that all came together as it did that you ended up uh, driving the 13 car this weekend instead of the zero. Okay. Yeah. First of all, thanks for uh, having me back on the show. Glad to do it. And, uh, yeah, so this weekend I'm in the uh, 13 Dodge, the Industrial Pipeline Solutions Dodge, and it's uh, with Carl Long Motorsports. And uh, so, like you said, yeah, I'm usually in the zero car with JD Motorsports. Um, just kind of some weird circumstances that, that went through, just some uh, – there was the possibility of, of a sponsorship with another driver that, that kind of fell through. And uh, so, like I said, I'm going to be in the 13 this week, but um, I'll be back in the zero at Texas. Michael Self will be piloting the zero next week at Kansas, so I'll be off there, but I'll be back at Texas. Well, you've uh, you've run most of the season in the zero car, and uh, you have been improving as as you've gone. I mean, it's obvious that... Uh, of course, I think everybody would recognize that the more seat time you have at this level, the Xfinity Series level, the better. And, you know, you, you have had, you really haven't had a bad year at all for someone who uh, has had only limited opportunities in the series up until now. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, this year we've, we've had some, some ups and some downs, um, definitely to get my first full season uh, well, almost full season here with uh, JD Motorsports has been amazing, and the, and that experience is is second to none. So, uh, you know, definitely glad to pretty much run almost every track on the circuit here now, except for some of the road courses. So, uh, I think that definitely will help me in the future as far as uh, you know the learning curve and tracks and stuff like that. But uh, but uh, you, you know that the experience really helps. And uh, we've had some some ups. We finished ninth at Daytona earlier in the year, and uh, and July. And then you know we we've, we've had some strong efforts where we had funding, and some other ones where um, you know we would just kind of get by and still finish in the twenty second, twenty third range. So 
so really for what we've had this year, I think we've done very well. And, uh, you know, with like a little bit more opportunities and sponsorship, I think we have the, the opportunity to do extremely well. Well, I agree. And it's been actually fun to watch the whole JD Motorsports group this year, because of course you're teamed with Landon Castle in the zero one and, uh, Ross Chastain has been driving the four and, you know, all of you have had some, uh, you know, some, some real bright, uh, bright lights, if you will, some, some highs. And as you said, you've, you've had some lows as well, but, um, you know, by and large, it's been kind of a fun team to watch and, you know, three young guns who are, uh, you know, really doing a, I think an excellent job with, with what you have in, in JD motorsports. I mean, um, a team that's been around forever. It seems like right. Johnny Davis and, um, you know, so much, uh, dedication and commitment history there. And it's good to see sponsors like flex seal coming on board and, uh, giving you guys the opportunity to race week in and week out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, having, having those guys as teammates has been, you know, great Ross and, and Landon are both excellent drivers. Um, there's a, you know, we each have our own uh, teams within the JD Motorsports group, and and they, uh, you know, they all work a little differently. I'm not going to get into the exact, but uh, sure. you know, we've all done extremely well with, uh, you know, the avenues that we are within the the organization, and I think I think we've all done a good job at expanding the JD Motorsports name and and uh, making the program better, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll just continue to grow here in the future, and uh, that's kind of our goal each week. Is to get all we can out of what we're given for that weekend and, uh, and ultimately just help our team uh, grow, which, you know, hopefully will help us grow as well. Talk a little bit about the sponsor that you've got on the car this weekend. Yeah, definitely. He's a, uh, a friend. Uh, it, they own the company Industrial Piping Solutions. So they do um, your big piping and, and welding installations for big factories uh, that install a lot of automated products. So pretty much any factory you could think of, um, that has piping and, and, and different things of that nature, that's that's kind of what they're involved in. So uh, really neat to kind of see some of the inner workings behind it and, and uh, just really excited that they've decided to step up on board and uh, and help us this weekend. So very glad to represent them, and, and they were at the track today and going to be there tomorrow, and uh, we'll have a great time. Well, I, I'm sure that uh, I, I'm sure it's a good opportunity for them, for sure. Uh, and you know, I'm I really am uh, curious what your plan is going forward. I know you said that you're going to be in the car at um, at Texas back in the zero beyond uh, Texas. Are you are you going to be running the rest of the season, or what is it looking like for you to finish things out? Yeah, yeah. So I'll be back in at Texas, and then and then Phoenix and Homestead after that. And uh, we haven't finalized anything that we have for next year, so uh, nothing to report there as of now. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back in the car starting at Texas, and and we'll finish off the year there with uh, with JD Motor Shorts and the Zero Car. Harrison, you've had a lot of experience this year uh, behind that Zero Car. I mean, what's the biggest challenge been for you? Uh, this season, you know, um, Daytona in February wasn't the way you wanted it to go, and then you finished ninth there in July. Uh, I mean, what is what has this season been like for you? What's been some of the biggest challenges you faced? Being being a uh, not having the budget that the bigger teams have, but but competing with what you have with JD Motorsports. Uh, yeah, I'd say one of the biggest things that we've kind of uh, battled with this year, and that we uh, we have made gains on getting it better, is just um, our organization kind of. Um, within our team and, and just really going over and, and checking stuff over. So um, we've had a couple of mechanical failures and parts failures and just some little stuff like that. And I've made mistakes as well. So, um, you know, really when, when we can put together a weekend with, with minimal mistakes, um, you know, we, we really do well. So I think what we've been working on this year is, is we've got pretty good cars. We just got to put stuff together, minimize our mistakes. And, uh, and that usually equates to a lot better finishes. So, um, like I said, we've done better with it this year. There's still some work to be done, but uh, just like any organization with growing, uh, you're going to have that, but um, you're known for, for how you handle them. Well, and uh, you've always been a class act, and you've always uh, been a very talented racer. I've watched you since Legends Cars, and I know that you've got the ability to perform at this level, and it's been good to see you have the opportunity and have some shining moments this year. Uh, 
I know you can't do it by yourself, Harrison, and I know you've had several different uh, sponsors and people that have helped you out over the course of this season. Um, how about an, an acknowledgement for all of them? Yeah, definitely. Some of our uh, our biggest team sponsors that we have as a whole, like you said earlier in the show, uh, Flex Seal. Yes. And then also we have G&K Services that provide uniforms and, and mats and other things of that nature for, for big companies. And then, uh, you know, personally, I've had some, some great help. We had Veco Plan, which uh, produces an industrial shredders at Charlotte, and uh, some other some other companies, like Treadwear, that makes tire letters, which have been a big hit. Um, letters that kind of go on your tire and makes it give it that race car look. So we've had a we've had a lot of good partners, and we've had some different um, car dealerships and and uh, Gerber Collision in Chicago. So a lot of great people that have helped us uh, keep this team rolling and and we're looking forward to working with them in the future as well well uh, congratulations on the success that you have had to date and just for being in the position that you're in now being able to compete in the xfinity series i know that you uh had a motor let go in the second round of practice here today uh but you did tell me uh before the show that the team is changing the motor so you're going to be set to go i would imagine uh when tomorrow comes Yes, they. Uh, it is a Dodge this thirteen, so they uh, they're on a lease program with with Penske. So uh, oh, wow. they've got good motors. So we're they're putting a the backup one, and uh, probably finishing up here right now actually. And uh, we should be okay for tomorrow. Kind of stinks that we blew the motor there that early in the second practice. We were uh, just kind of getting the handle of our car and wanted to try a couple more things. But um, you know we'll get a little time in qualifying tomorrow. Might get make a couple uh, shots at, at the first round and second round. So. We'll see how that goes, but uh, just looking forward to this weekend and, and hoping for some success. Yeah, it's when it's good to have the uh, format that we have for qualifying where you do get to uh, take some extra laps. It's not just a two-lap deal. You actually can uh, use uh, maybe the first time out just for some quick practice to make sure everything's okay. So uh, that's Harrison Rhodes. We certainly wish you the best of luck, my friend, and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Harrison Rhodes will be driving Carl Long at Motorsports number 13 this weekend, and uh, you can look for him in tomorrow's Xfinity race. And with that, we are going to step aside. When we come back, we will continue with more race talk. Here from Charlotte Motor Speedway as we continue to broadcast live on Mojangles Pole Night. You're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. The odds of a young girl being discovered by an industry insider while singing to herself pumping gas. One in 300 million. The odds of a daughter of a clergyman from Severn, Maryland, spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts. One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win seven Grammy Awards. One in 1.4 million. The odds of selling over 40 million records. One in 800,000. The odds of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism. One in 68. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn more at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
Hi, this is Eric Darnell. This is David Reagan. Jamie McMurray. This is Carl Edwards here for RAD. The entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsports. Performance Motorsports Network. Let's go back to steel and aluminum stock cars and supplying the SRIs with Race Chaser Online Senior Editor Tom Baker and the Speed 77 Radio Cast. Uh, steel, what? That was just awful. Uh, well, that's close enough. I don't care. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. Tom Baker along with Jacob Seelman. And uh, what is that commercial? It's it, that, that where the lady says, that's not how any of this works. No, 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 <laughs> You'd no, think no, after no. all this time, Steel could get that whole thing right. But uh, at any rate, uh, definitely excited to be with you broadcasting live from the Charlotte Miller Speedway here uh inside the media center's theater room and uh enjoying it on a thursday night bojangles poll night going on matt kenseth has uh just won the poll just won the bowl so uh i guess he'll be eating some bojangles soon yeah something like that yeah. uh, here here's my numbers stat boy says tom fourth poll of the season for kenseth that's the most he's ever had in a single season in his sprint cup career he won the poll with a qualifying lap that was just a tick over 194 miles an hour, actually 194 and a half, and he was two tenths quicker than anybody else, including his teammate Kyle Bush, who joins him on the front row. That's fast, and you know that's a little bit better than freaky fast too. Kevin Harvick's only good enough for 11th in that last round. He, it's like somebody flips the light switch and. Kevin went night night. Yeah, that's, <laughs> he fe- he he went sleepy fast. <laughs> <laughs> went to or sleepy something. fast. That's what may- there. maybe had one too many bushes during the uh, <laughs> maybe during, not during enough. The un- <laughs> anyway, we'll get back on track here. Try to at least. Well, hey, it's all fun, right? Exactly. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's really been uh, the qualifying actually was very interesting. It was good to see Matt end up on the pole. I don't think anybody's surprised at that. As you said, it's a sweep and the Toyotas have been fast. Uh, but yeah. run down for us. the. Uh, Let's see. Top 12 that advance to the final round go like this. Front row, all Toyota. Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch. Row two, all Ford, Joey Logano from Team Penske, Greg Biffle from Roush Fenway Racing, fourth. A Toyota and the fastest Chevy on row three. Denny Hamlin gives JGR three of the top five spots. And Kurt Busch, the fastest bow tie in sixth. Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, Eric Yalmarola, Ryan Newman, Happy Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 12 cars that advance to the final round of qualifying and will make up positions one through 12 on Saturday night for the Bank of America 500 here at Charlotte. Jimmy Johnson's not in the chase anymore. He's still got speed at Charlotte. Eric Almarola was never in the chase. He's got some decent speed. And that 600-mile winner, Carl Edwards, that sneaky guy at JGR, he just keeps creeping up the board all day. He gets a little faster and a little faster and a little faster, Tom, every time out. And now he's right up in there in the top eight. And we know this race is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Well, and uh, it's interesting to note that when Carl came in this afternoon to do his press conference, they before he actually started the press conference, the Speedway, Marcus Smith and uh, the folks from Charlotte Motor Speedway presented him with a beautiful watch that it's now going to be that all of the 
race winners in the cup series here at Charlotte start getting um, really nice watches. They had a sponsor for it. And uh, I mean, this thing is beautiful. So Carl can tell time now, Kyle Magnus. So I'm thinking that uh, because he now could tell time, he could see how fast he was actually going and realized I need to step it up a little. And that's what uh, made all the difference when it came to qualify. Tom, if it's anything like, in May, I mean, he was in victory lane, so I'm just going to put that out there. Um, but uh, that yeah, was a bit I mean, of a you know, fuel mileage deal, though. Well, hey, you know what? The, the car who crosses the checker, who gets the checker oh, flag. Oh, no like, question, no question. So I'm not well. arguing it. Just saying it was a little bit of fuel mileage. Now I think he's, you know, he seems to have the speed, and and I just again, I'm impressed, Kyle, with Eric Almarola. I mean, my goodness gracious, it's great to see that car running as well as it is, and. Um, to see him make it uh, into the final round of qualifying and wind up inside the top 10, I mean, that's this This has got to be one of his best efforts of the year, and it really, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what he can do come Saturday night in the race here. And he has a pole there, too, so I mean, yeah, he not, does. not You're shockingly right. enough that, you know, he's up there. But yeah, I mean, that 43 team we were saying earlier, I don't think it was a fluke. You know, they do have the speed, just sometimes the brakes don't go, didn't go and- his way. Go ahead, Tom. Well, I was going to say, you know what? Um, Eric has talked uh, two or three times this year about how hard that entire team has dug in. Um, you know, it's really kind of just digging your heels into the mud. You know, I, I, it almost um, it almost reminded me the way he was talking about it is, um, it, you know, you're you're in a tug of war and you're just fighting for every inch of that rope, and that's really what. Um, it, uh, really what it, it reminds me of, of how hard that group. And I know Roush Fenway is the same right now. Um, they're just, just fighting for every 10th of a second they can get. And it looks like the, uh, Petty Motorsports team as a whole, both the 43 and the nine are starting to find some speed, but Amarola definitely. And, you know, Richard Petty has been very high on Eric since the start. He really wanted him in the car and, uh, You know, there is no word yet on, you know, what's going to happen with a nine. It hasn't been said that Sam Hornish is not coming back, but it also hasn't been said that he is. Um, And so I think in a sense, Sam may be in a situation where, like Regan Smith in the Xfinity series, he's kind of auditioning at this point, Kyle. So good to see him uh, with a little bit more speed here and, you know, at least uh, looking more like a top 20 car. I think that run for Sam Hornish Jr. in 2014 for Gibbs, that really, um, you know, I think it kind of sparked him to get that ride at yeah. Richard Petty Motorsports. Didn't have the brakes after his Iowa win back in May of 2014, but still um, ran up front, had some issues. I think in Mid Ohio he was leading, and uh, Road America he was leading late, and he got bit by fuel mileage and the rain. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for, for Sam, I mean, this is pretty much, I mean, for all he did back in Nationwide, now Xfinity Series, uh, you know, for, for what he did, almost winning a championship, Tom, and then going up to the Cup Series. I mean, this is kind of a, you know, a second chance for him, you know, um, doing doing as much as he did with Penske, not doing very well in the Cup Series, and then going to, to Nationwide, getting the win at Phoenix, and then, um, you know, getting that win at, at Vegas a couple years later. So I think it was kind of a, kind of a resurgence for him to go back down the series and uh, do what he did. And now, I mean, they have shown speed. Uh, I think he is what two or three top tens on the season. I think it was a sixth at Talladega, um, and he finished tenth at the Glen. That was a very eventful race for him. Uh, you know, from what other <laughs> drivers that did. Yeah. Um, on the one restart, uh, just but you know, I mean, yeah, it's still up in the air right now what they're going to do with that nine car. You know, it's good to know that they're sticking with Ford. Um, you know, I, I don't think Ford is really gone yet. I don't believe that because uh, you know, you still have Penske up there. They're they're both cars in the oh, chase right now, still alive. And, uh, you know, I, I know, um, you know, with Dodge leaving the sport a few years ago that, you know, that, that you know, when, when uh, Penske announced they're going to Ford, uh, you know, I kind of just threw that under the bus. But, I, I mean, you go back to that uh, with that as well, as well. Um, so there's just so much going on right now. So, well, there uh, is. And the thing is, uh, again, you know, this is really a, a bit of speculation because, um, you know, we don't know for sure whether or not any change is going to be made in the nine there, there've been whispers that perhaps, uh, they, they might have been talking about making a change, um, in that car. And of course, when you think about 
the drivers who are available, you know, you, you, you start thinking about guys like David Reagan, whose uh, ride is going to go away at the end of the year, the 55 car. And, you know, there's some other guys out there. And even when Regan Smith at his press conference earlier today, he was asked about his situation for 2016 and his, his, um, his, uh, uh, reply was very interesting he said there are a lot of things that are out there and a lot of stuff going on and the the voice inflection that he used kind of told me that there may be uh more to this than you know just uh the junior motorsport situation he he may have some other things that he's looking at and so we'll have to see where Regan winds up next year but he's really worried about 2015 yeah tom and i mean what they've done i mean look at last week tom they go out there i mean i was thrown off by that i did not think they would run that well tom uh last week and you know they go out there and um you know they beat Gibbs cars of all people and um you know, so there was just just crazy. I mean, I didn't think I didn't think he was going to hold off the twenty or the fifty four last week, but you know, Regan Smith gets the job done, passes Elliott Sadler after one restart, and um, he just drove away. Uh, you know how, how how well he handled traffic. You know, and now with Elliott yeah. Sadler going over there next year, there's still a lot up in the air. You know, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's just so much going on for me. He is in no way out of this championship right now. I just not at all. The, the way the team has been performing, yes, they haven't had the breaks. I've been saying that with Ty Dillon, who got bit last week at Dover. Uh, Regan Smith is only 36 points behind, and I'm um, either either the sixth or the nine slips up here in the next couple of weeks, Tom. Uh, just uh, you know, there's a lot going on here, and um, you know, I mean, well, there's five races to go. I mean, he can easily make up that 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 deficit. He really could, and it's going to be fun to uh, keep an eye on and watch what Regan Smith can do as these last five races go down. His first shot to get another win, third in the last nine races, if he can do it, is going to be tomorrow night for the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield in North Carolina drive for the Cure 300 here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Try saying that five times fast, but uh, we will take a break here. On on the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. Matt Kenseth, the pole winner, just coming across the hall in the media center, going to talk about his pole winning run. We'll be right back to talk more NASCAR right after this here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com, or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent? One in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. But every driver seeks the pinnacle of their achievements. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 68. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. 
be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsport. Performance Motorsports Network. We now return you to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. And here's the guy who lost the hula hoop contest at the last PMN Summer Picnic because he, well, he just can't hula hoop. It's Tom Baker. And I've got a dance at two weddings coming up in the next couple of weeks. And I'm really not too sure about, I used to win limbo contests, but that's I, that's not dancing. I'm all. really not sure. Well, I know I'm just making the point. That's something they usually do at a wedding. They'll have a, a, a limbo contest. I used to win those. Now I'm not so sure I even want to enter. Uh, welcome back <laughs> to the stock car steel SRI motorsports show. Although one of the weddings we do have, uh, an EMT is, uh, the, the pending groom. So at least I would be covered there. Uh, welcome back to the show. We're broadcasting live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway inside the media center theater room as Bojangles pole night is just wrapped up. And now we're getting ready for the summer slam one fifty for the NASCAR Southern slam. Southern it's not summer. Anyway. What did I say? Summer slam. Yeah. Sorry. Southern slam is what I meant to say. Uh, it's an old wrestling thing, yeah, you know, well. um, NASCAR, uh, Southern wheel and Southern modified tour. And, uh, this is really going to be an interesting race as we talked about at the top of the show, because this is it, this is the closer. So yeah. this is the, the championship is going to be decided tonight. And tonight, George Brunholz right the third is on the pole for this one. And he's in the running for the championship. And I believe the sound I just heard over our shoulder means we are green yes. here at the Charlotte motor modified Speedway. thunder. That would be by the ground grace of God. pounders yes. are green. That would be by the grace of God and 600 horsepower. That's as they right. Say up Can north. you tell I like modified? <laughs> we all like modifieds. We like them on this show. GB three needs a good showing tonight. He really, Tom, basically his only shot to win this championship, lead the race, lead the most laps, win the race, and hope Andy Sice finishes somewhere outside the top 10. I mean, he's controlling all that he can control by starting up front to win this race. He and Ryan Priest, this track owes Priest a win after last year when he was up front and the car broke with eight laps to go. Yeah, it really does. And it's also a track that doesn't care who it owes what. Uh, you know, it's just, it's it's a track that can bite you in a hurry because this is a quarter mile bull ring. I mean, literally, this is the same quarter mile that the Legends and the Bandolero cars run their summer shootout series on. It's on the front stretch um, of the big track. And you've got a couple of transitions because when you go into turns one and two, you're actually turning kind of down into part of pit road. And then three and as you go through three and four, you're going back up onto the front straightaway again. So, uh, there is a bit of a transition and it's not a very wide course either. Like we've said through the show. So passing's at a premium for sure. It really is. And, you know, already five laps in and, it takes starting up front, but it also t takes the inside lane, Tom. Andy Sice uh, up two spots in the early going. I mean, it took less than five laps, and we're single file all the way through the field, and that's what it's going to be most of this night. It's going to be a freight train here at Charlotte, and if you're going to pass somebody, you're either going to do one of two things. You're either going to wait for the guy in front of you to make a mistake or you're going to bump them out of the way. That simple. Well, and the very fact that we've gone seven or eight laps now without a caution is a good sign because that tells me that nobody got too excited on the start. I think these drivers understood going in, this is 150 laps. So it's okay to go single file just for a little bit, let things sort of shake out a little bit, get into a rhythm and then start trying to, you know, to, to, to get more business-like and uh, race a little harder here as we get into uh, the middle half of the middle third of the race. But, um, you know, as we, you know, we talk about the championship, we mentioned that Brunholzel was probably in the best position in terms of starting spot. But, you know, you've got Andy Sice there and Andy's definitely looking to defend. And he's, that's a driver that loves this racetrack 
And, you know, you've got guys like Burton, Jason Myers in this race. Burt Myers is a three time winner here. He is, including last year. And, and, uh, we, you know, we mentioned Ryan Priest. I mean, this is, there's 18 cars, yeah. but there are some all stars in this one. And it's definitely a race that's very competitive from start to finish. It is. And I mean, the biggest thing about all of this is, and I'm, I'm rather shocked that we've actually gone the first 10 laps of this race, 11 laps of this race now with no cautions. Usually, Tom, this is a race that gets very dicey in the early goings because everybody's so tightly compacted together that you have a few early yellows. We haven't seen that so far, despite the fact that Ryan Priest is all over the back bumper of Brunhosel for the lead. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of a game of cat and mouse here in the early stages of any modified race, but especially here on the quarter mile at Charlotte. You catch up to somebody in the corner, they pull away from you on the straightaway. You catch up to them in the next corner, they pull away from you again. It's all about catching up to them just enough to give them a tiny little pep. Get them a well, little squirrely, and then you slide on through. And when you when you start getting into slower traffic, that's when yeah. it gets really hairy. Because what you just said, the sort of rubber band effect, you stretch the rubber band and it comes back in a hurry. You That's kind of what you get is the accordion effect. And the guys who are toward the back of the field, most of them much slower than the guys at the front of the field. So when you start getting side by side and you kind of get slowed down, it really bunches everybody up and that's when you can get your multi-car accidents because somebody hits the brakes a little more than the guy behind them thought they were going to going into the corner. And next thing you know, you've got a chain reaction and that's, that's what you got to watch for. But Priest and Brunholzel are veteran drivers. Both of them understand, like we said, you're not going to win it in the first 10 or 20 laps of the race. And I'm sure that Ryan Priest has got to be thinking to himself, okay, I can afford to just stay right on GB3's tail for as long as it takes. As long as I stay here, I'm ahead of everybody else in, in the order. I can just stay here, either wait for a mistake or wait for later in the race and then start using my stuff up. He's not going to use it up in the first third of the event. No, he's not. And right now, uh, as he sits out front, doesn't use up too much of his stuff, the points leader, Andy Sice, has to start using up his stuff a little bit to get to the front of the field. He's ninth right now, and I, I'm getting ready to look at the math right here to see what it's go what it's going to take, what it's going to be. I believe the gap was 13 points between Sice and Brunhosel coming in here. That's exactly what it was. And if Brunhosel wins this race tonight, they will be tied on wins which means the count back is second place finishes. Don't ask me who the tie break holder is for that one just yet. I'm going to get I'm going to get our buddy Tim Southers during the next break to run the numbers for me and tell me exactly what would happen if those two tied, but as they run Brunozel, if he leads the most laps, wins the race, Sice finishes ninth, hasn't led they're tied atop the championship with three wins apiece. It does not get any closer than that. Well, it doesn't. And, you know, you can talk about the points all you want, but when you've got guys like Ryan Priest, Ryan is not going to do anything to, you know, to mess with the, uh, the, the points, the championship contenders, but he does want to pass them. And, uh, you know, Ryan is certainly not out to help anyone else's cause. And again, with Burton, Jason Myers in the middle of this as well, um, you know, this is this is really going to be an interesting race. And the fact that we haven't had yet a caution flag, Kyle Magda, I mean, would you have really thought that we would go this long into this race without a caution? It's kind of like comparing that to Bowman Gray, Tom. I mean, when you don't yeah. get a caution there, it's just crazy. But uh, yeah. I mean, I wish I was with you guys watching that race, but, um, you know, it's it's really cool that you guys get to see another a champion crown tonight. Um, I know you guys will be at the banquet here in a couple months uh, to see all the NASCAR home tracks champions. But, uh, yeah, I mean, um, you have a guy like Ryan Priest out there, just no points, just going out there, going for the win. Uh, like you said, Tom, uh, led a lot last year, and um, something broke on the car, but... Uh, you know, is it really? Uh, I think he's that number ninety-eight tonight in that yes. number ninety-eight curb yeah, record uh, yep. modified. Um, I think it's a Tommy Baldwin car. So I mean, there's just so much going on right now. You know, um, for him, and I um, mean, you know, he still has one more race to go at at Thompson here uh, next weekend with the World Series. I mean, just a just a couple of big weeks, you know, coming up. You know, uh, with the Southern Tour wrapping up this weekend at Charlotte, and then uh, the 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 regular Northern, whatever you want to call it, modified tour. 
um, racing at Thompson next weekend. So um, just a lot of storylines here. You know, maybe maybe this, this can give this race can give Ryan Priest a boost. Going into the into uh, Thompson, I think he and Doug Kobe are tied right now. So there's just so much going on. Yeah, that's in the modified that's world. The, that's the other thing that the the Northern Tour, the the Wheel and Northern Modified Tour, uh, going to be in the same situation coming up at Thompson. But you know, just in this race tonight, one driver we haven't talked about, Kyle Ebersole. Ebersole was the fastest in second round practice, and uh, the Pennsylvania driver definitely showing well. Um, so far here today, and we've also got guys like Trey Hutchins and uh, Frank Fleming and Danny Bone and Bobby Miesmer and, of course, James Savali out of Connecticut, uh, Savali driving the Hillbilly Racing Coors Light Pontiac, number 79 here, and Kale Gale also in the field in the Ream Gale for Chevrolet, number 95. So 18 cars all together, and all of them um, – fighting for everything they can get as we said this is this is it so uh gonna be a fun race as we play it out here and uh right now brunholzel and priest looking really really sporty here but um it is far from done and you got to keep your eyes on burton jason myers because those guys just know this track and and of course being bowman gray regulars you know this is like old home to them i want to talk just for a quick second about what we've got coming up here tomorrow. Yeah, the uh, Xfinity Series. The Xfinity Series takes center stage on Friday. And, of course, that points chase is going to uh, be coming down to the wire shortly as yeah, well. five races to go. And, you know, it is very tight right now with Chris Busher leading. And I've been impressed, Jacob, with how fast Chris Busher has been this entire day he's looked really strong here both he and regan smith figuring into this this title fight as well as ty dillon and right now both smith and busher looking really stout here so keep your eye on the 60 car yeah keep your eye on him indeed uh, he was fourth as far as speeds go in the final xfinity practice that happened yes. just a couple hours ago just ahead of regan smith who's trying to make up ground in the championship chase busher leading chase elliott by 24 points regan smith by 36 points your podium in the championship chase so we'll follow that storyline here uh, as the day goes on tomorrow right now we're going to do a little business come back and continue the stock car steel sri motorsports show in just a moment you're listening to the performance motorsports network live from charlotte motor speedway the voice of motorsports okay so sarah i'm dropping you off at emily's yep and josh you're going to soccer dad Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion okay okay we're buckling up see all buckled good choice i'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time what what no do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives never give up until they buckle up a message from the national highway traffic safety administration and the ad council visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up for more information Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. 
This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And now, back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show with Speed 77 Radio's most follically challenged host, Tom Baker. You know, enough already. You know, Big Mike, otherwise known as the skipper behind uh, the glass tonight, uh, just loves talking about my five head, which I have had since I was four. But that's ah, for, for yeah, another discussion and another time. <laughs> Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. Uh, Tom Baker, along with Jacob Seelman and Kyle Magda, both of whom have hair. And uh, we are broadcasting live from the charlotte motor speedway inside the media center's theater room on bojangles pole night really want to thank lenny baticki and the entire staff here at charlotte motor speedway for being so gracious to us and uh helping us to be able to make this possible to broadcast live from the middle of it all here on uh, nascar cup weekend and really uh excited to be doing it and thankful for the opportunity. Um, and as we continue on uh, with the program, of course, the um, modified event, the Southern Slam 150 for the NASCAR Southern Wheel and Modified Tour is still continuing. And I don't think we've had a caution flag yet, have no, we? No, we haven't. We it's are amazing. 50, we are 53 laps into this race. George Brunhosel has led them all and nothing. We're lapping cars. James Savali uh, is the only driver who had an issue after a flat tire. Um, he's seven laps down, but everybody else is still out there rolling. In fact, the whole field is out there rolling right now. And boy, oh boy, uh, Ryan Priest is really trying to chase GB3 through this traffic and just can't quite do it. This is where it starts to get interesting, guys, because with the lack of caution flags, you obviously don't get restarts to bunch the field up where, and we talked about on a tight track like this, you restart them double file. You've got an opportunity to pass some cars on the restart if you're clever enough. And uh, guys like Andy Sice, uh, you know, trying to get through this field and get to the front with every point that, you know, that they can get is what, what they need to win this championship here tonight. Um, you know, guys like that, that are in the back of the field, Kyle Magda, it's going to get tougher and tougher for them to advance. If we don't get a few cautions for them to actually have the restarts. Yeah. I saw a little bit of that, that at Bowman gray at back in May. And it was, uh, I think it might've been the K and N race. We went green flag for so long as we yeah. did. Uh, and, um, it was just crazy because, you know, I, I don't think, you know, some of these drivers are used to lo running longer runs and some of them aren't and, uh, you know, not trying to push your car as much and trying to save something there, you know, in case the race does run, run long like it is at Charlotte right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you need to be ready for that at all times uh, just in case that happens and that's happening right now. So, well, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, with uh, Priest right, running right with GB3, um, it looks like those two have been the class of the field so far, but there's still a long way to go, Tom. Well, there is a long way to go, but yet there really isn't. I mean, we've already completed, uh, you know, 55 laps or so. We're over a third of the way through this 150 lap race. And here's the interesting thing about this more than, than anything is Ryan Priest being in second now also plays a bigger and bigger role because he's not in the championship uh, contention. He's just there here to try to win a race and he's playing the role of spoiler GB three. Uh, when he was on our program a couple of weeks ago, talked about the importance of, you know, picking, picking cars off on restarts to advance. We haven't had a single restart yet, Jacob. And right now Ryan priest is starting to get testy. He is, but we will, we, we will have one, at least one restart here. Keep in mind because we'll yes. have the half. Yeah, we do have a halfway break coming but. up here in about 10 laps. We're already 65 laps oh, into wow. this race without a caution flag. I mean, it's flying by. It's been very impressive. And, you know, now you get one shot, you get about five to seven minutes to make any adjustments you need to make, uh, you know, rack them, stack them, get ready for a restart. And, 
who knows, if we keep running the way we've been running in this first half, that might that may be the only restart you get to make up spots tonight. Well, and again, that's going to that's gonna make it, uh, if we get to the halfway break with no cautions and drivers start thinking that their only shot to get to the front is the restart the first few laps afterward, um, we could start seeing some cautions because of that. Yeah. You know, drivers start pushing it a little too hard. And like we've said, this is such a tight track. It is so hard to just out and outright pass a car clean on this track that, um, I mean, this is really... Uh, an entirely different type of racing than, you know, what you're going to see on the mile and a half, of course, as we, you know, get into the Xfinity and Cup Series races. And it's a great way to start the weekend. Um, it, you know, one of the th one of the things I want to talk about real quick is the better half dash oh, gosh, that we yeah. had earlier today. And if you haven't seen uh, the photos that I posted from the better half dash. I've got two of them, the victory lane photo and a photo of the winning car uh, on the last lap of the, the, the race. And uh, they are, you can go to at race chaser news on Twitter, or you can go to our Facebook account, which is race chaser news as well, or to performance motorsports network, uh, fa Facebook or uh, Twitter as well because at PMN radio, because they're on, on there as well. And w why I brought this up is because the better half dash is a bandolero race that involves the better halves, the wives of, uh, or, or girlfriends. girlfriends of, you know, the competitors in the Xfinity and or cup series. And, um, the winner was Blake Cook's wife, Shannon, and Shannon had a little bit of misfortune early on when Brian Scott's wife decided to hitch a ride on the back end of her car going into turn one and basically ripped the tail section right off the bandolero. So I promise you she was light at the scales, but, and if you've ever, uh, if you know anything about those bandolero cars, you take the tail off, that car is going to be a very ill handling beast didn't seem to bother her one bit. She restarted third, drove straight to the front and pulled away. <laughs> Yes, she did. It was a very was impressive great. drive. She got a great trophy. And then in the media room afterwards with us, Tom, she officially retired. She said she's not coming back <laughs> for next year's race. She said one and done with a big trophy, I might add, is plenty for her. You got to love that, don't you? you, you and she was very impressive. I mean, she really had some good instincts out there. She she muscled that car when she had to, and she was sideways several times. And... Uh, she managed to save it and keep the lead. So it was pretty cool to watch that. Um, Max Pappas's wife was right up there. Kyle Larson's uh, girlfriend, I think, was uh, England, yeah. she was third, I think, second. right? Or second. second yeah, she right was second. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that was basically by about uh, a bumper and a half. It, you know, it was pretty um, it was pretty wild. So it was fun to watch that. Uh, and again, that was run on the quarter mile. So we've seen a real variety today. And now this, this modified race going on in the quarter mile track, um, you know, it's, it's just been amazing that we have not had a caution flag and a real credit to these drivers who are obviously treating each other with a great deal of respect. Uh, but I suspect after the halfway break, a little bit of that's going to go out the window because there could be some people get desperate to pick up spots here. Well, now I'm, you know, I'm looking at this and we, it's now 83 laps in and we haven't waived the caution yet. They may have changed the format from what it was last year and we may not be having that halftime break this time. Now you really got to wonder who's got to get up on the wheel. Well, if that's the case, then I'm surprised that uh, the drivers aren't starting to um, get a little bit more uh, testy out there because... Uh, you would think that the guys like Andy Sice wouldn't want to be stuck any further back in the field than uh, that than you know they would have to be for for this long into the race because uh, you know it's a 150 lap race so you've only got about 70 less than 70 laps at this point to try and make some moves and this isn't one of those situations where you can pass a car every other lap and just no, work your way to the not. front it, it's hard enough to pass one car every seven or eight laps yeah it really is and you know all all the while here uh andy sice has managed to 
gain one position, the one position that he needed with George Brunhosel leading this race, Sice would lead Brunhosel by a single point right now in eighth place. Wow. Yeah, how tight is this? So if it ended this if it ended as it is now, Sice wins by a point. Yes, indeed. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, and that's how close it is, folks. These modifieds have big old bumpers, um, and they use them. That's uh, it's very, um, it's a very rough and tumble style of racing, uh, especially in this area. And some of these guys, as we've been mentioning, uh, Bowman Gray Stadium, just about an hour and ten minutes or so up the road in Winston Salem, North Carolina is basically just that. It's a football stadium with a race track around the outside of it. It's a quarter mile, and it is as tight as it gets. And this this track is about the same. So for some of these drivers, this is what they do all summer long. They run Bowman Gray. And so, you know, drivers like Ryan Priest have gotten some opportunities to run the bigger tracks up yeah. north. And, of course, you know, even in the, the bigger series now, having run um, Xfinity several times and, and even a, a cup start or two. So, uh, but most of these guys are, have been conditioned on the bull rings. So it is definitely not a friendly sort of sport no, for sure. No. <laughs> By the way, shout out to Ryan Priest, who's going to make his second career sprint cup start at home. Yes. For Tommy Baldwin racing at the end of the season in the finale. I'm very excited about that. Uh, just another update on this modified race as we close in on the end of tonight's show. 93 of 150 laps in with no cautions, nine cars on the lead lap. And again, like we were mentioning just a second ago, if it ends now, Andy Sice wins the championship by a point. Well, a point is a point. That's a all point you need. A point is a point. And uh, by the way, if you're listening to this show uh, and wondering, am I going to get to see this on TV at all, or is there anywhere I can watch it? Absolutely, there is. NBC Sports Network is taping this event uh, for future broadcasts. So just keep your eye on NBC Sports Network and check your local listings, and we'll try to uh, make sure that we announce to you here on the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show when it when uh, they decide to put, air it. One week from tonight, as a matter of fact. It seven, is. Yes, oh, wow, seven that's quick. 7 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN one week from tonight. So that would be the 15th. Yes, it would be. So that means September can, 15th. That means you can watch the broadcast on NBC. October 15th. Turn the sound oh. down a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, October 15th. October. But that means you can watch the broadcast, turn the sound down a little bit, listen to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports show right here next Thursday, and catch the modified racing. Does it get any better than that? No. And again, just make sure you do it with the sound off. You don't need to hear the announcers. We've already told you what's going on today so that next week you can just replay what we said. Exactly. You know, and, and listen to us live on the radio doing our Stock Car Still SRI <laughs> Motorsport show. See how that works? Yes, it works well. All right, guys. We're on the <laughs> three-minute countdown now. Final thoughts to you first, Kyle Magda, with Matt Kenseth on the pole here at Charlotte. Does he use that pole position, and go to victory lane like he did in the first round, or does somebody else jump up and steal the glory? I think Kevin Harvick wins this race. The reason I say that is because the performance at Dover last week, uh, I know that JGR didn't perform as well as they wanted to in the spring, even though Carl Edwards did win that race. Uh, just um, It's going to be a little different this time, but you know, I mean, right now they're hot still, but I, I just don't know how anybody can beat that four team right now. They're, they're quick in practice, you know, starting up front on um, on Saturday night. It's just going to be really hard, I think, with Kevin Harvick. All the momentum that team has had, they've been fast every single week. I just don't see anybody beating them right now. Tom Baker, the Xfinity race tomorrow night. Kyle Busch is in the field. He has eight career Xfinity wins at Charlotte. Does he make it nine? Well, I picked him on Monday night on the Motorsports Madness show, and he certainly has not shown me anything so far today in practice to indicate that I shouldn't stick with him. Uh, but I got to tell you, that's I'm almost looking forward to the Xfinity race more than I am the cup race on Saturday for only one reason, and that is because Regan Smith is really hot right now. And with Kyle Busch and Chris Busher both showing so fast today, Regan Smith is in this title fight with Busher, with Chase Elliott, and with Ty Dillon. And, you know, Busher 
and Smith have both shown such speed. I am really interested to see how that plays out tomorrow night in the drive for cure th- drive for a cure 300. I, I can't wait to see how those guys do. I am going to be a race to that. the finish there. Yeah, it is. I'm excited about the whole thing. I really, I, I don't even know where to start. I'm just going to say, let's go racing and leave it at that right now. We're leaving you with a checkered flag here on the stock car steel SRI motorsports show. And once again, want to thank our guests tonight. Uh, Colin Cabry, William Byron, Harrison Rhodes for joining us here on the program. And as we come to conclusion and get ready to conclude the modified stars here tonight at Charlotte, uh, for Kyle Magda, Tom Baker, Big Mike behind the glass, Lenny Baticki, and all the staff at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Kerry Tharp, all the staff at NASCAR for helping us to make this show possible live from CMS tonight. I'm Jacob Seelman, reminding you to check out our partners at Stock Car Steel and SRI Supplies. Visit them on the web at stockcarsteel.com or sri-supplies.com, and we thank them for helping us make this show possible. Until next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm reminding you to keep it off the wall until we meet again. And hey, if you're at Charlotte, we'll see you this weekend at the racetrack. Have a safe racing weekend. Good night. You've been listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Tonight's show is brought to you by Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and SRI Supplies. For all of your racing needs, visit StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com. Keep up with the latest motorsports news every day on Race Chaser Online. The Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com a member of the Scorpion Radio Group Inc. and may not be rebroadcast replicated or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week for more great motorsports programming right here on the Performance Motorsports Network.